Hey, what's up you guys? This is Anthony here at DIY Auto Tech. Today we're going to be going over a couple different systems to help you diagnose your electrical problems with your car. This is going to be the beginning video of a multiple part series and in this first video we're going to show you some of the diagnostic equipment. The equipment shown on the table is as such. We have a couple different uh, little wire leads with alligator clips on them. We'll go over all of these later. I just happen to have a four pin relay sitting around here and we'll kind of go over the schematics and how to understand that. Just a simple 30 amp fuse that we're going to test and then we have some of our testing equipment. This would just be our OBD2 code reader pretty much. We have our multimeter which we'll go over in depth and we have two different versions of test lights. These are great to have. One is going to be a single lead test light. The other is going to be a two lead test light and we'll go over the differences of both. Remember, if you want to know a little more about each one of these tools specifically, make sure to check out the video on them. We're going to have a video for each tool being used specifically. Um, this is just a general overview of the tools that you're going to want to have to start off with. Okay? Alright guys, to start things off, we're going to start with the OBD2 plug-in scanner. So this is going to work for your car's model 1996 or newer. Um, this little guy here, this little pinout is going to plug in somewhere underneath the dash of your vehicle. Uh, again, it's different for every year make and model. And you're going to want to do this with the key on, engine off. This is going to power up and if you have, say, a check engine light on, this is going to give you, hopefully, will give you a readout of why the computer had set the check engine light. So what this information gives you is a starting point. It doesn't necessarily mean that what's on the screen is the problem, but it is giving you the location where the computer of the vehicle sensed that problem. The beautiful thing about these scanners too is they'll give you some uh, readouts of when the check engine light was set. It'll give you a freeze frame, what's called a freeze frame, of the data from the computer. So it'll show things like engine coolant temperature, throttle position, the RPM of the car, um, the ambient temperature, speed, all kinds of good information that will help you diagnose the problem. Another great tool that we can use to diagnose electrical problems is this digital multimeter. What these are going to help us do is to diagnose electrical problems at a more precise level. They typically come with two leads, a negative and a positive. The negative is always plugged into the comm terminal, which is your ground, and the red wire, depending on what you're testing, is going to be plugged into one of two ports here. So on this side, you have your voltage, continuity, uh, battery checking, the beeper, all kinds of stuff like that is going to go into this port here. But if you want to test amps, you're going to have to go to a different circuit, which is going to be over here. You can see DC 10 amps. So with this multimeter, we can check a number of things. First off, we'll start on this side. We can check our amperage. Now you're not going to check battery amps with this, but you will check things like parasitic drain from the negative cable of the battery to ground and you're going to see how much amperage is being lost while the vehicle is off. Um, that'll be a numerical readout here. You want something in the milliamp scale, um, otherwise you have too much drain. We'll get into that later. Also, we can move this back over here and we could test things like voltage on all these scales. We can hook a positive and negative part of the battery and we can check our voltage there. We can go to something like this for ohms checking. We'll you know, we'll hook these up to two separate ends of a wire and we'll see how much resistance you have. We could do something like this as well, which is audible for ohms checking or resistance checking to where uh, you're not looking for the numbers per se, but you're listening for this. You're listening to see if you're getting power from one side of the wire to the other. Anyways, this is a multimeter. We'll get into this later, testing some different equipment. Alright guys, this here is another important tool that we use to diagnose electrical problems. This is a single prong test light. What you would do with this tool is you'd plug it or you'd connect the alligator clip to either the positive or negative cable of the battery, depending on what you're looking for. And you would touch certain wires at their connectors, beyond the connectors, wherever you'd like to probe. Good reading would be that the light would illuminate. A bad reading would be that the light does not illuminate. What do I mean by that? We're going to demonstrate that right now. Even though this is a small overview, it's something we need to talk about. So we'll connect this to the negative cable of the battery. And when I touch the positive side, which is hot, has 12 volts, you're going to see this light illuminate. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. 
but you can see it illuminates. Now if I touch the negative cable, nothing's going to happen. So what is that telling us? If this wire is supposed to be hot, we touch it and the light turns on, that means it's good, it is hot. If this wire was cold when it was supposed to be hot, otherwise meaning if this wire didn't have voltage when it was supposed to, you'd touch it and it wouldn't, this light wouldn't turn on. Now conversely, we can also test if a wire has no voltage, if it's grounding. How do we do that? We would connect this probe to the positive side of the battery and when we go to touch a wire that has no power, is grounding, the light would turn on. If this wire happened to have power for some reason and we go to touch it, nothing would happen. It'd be like touching the positive cable. This system is kind of confusing to new users of diagnostic equipment, but in its simplest form, when you're trying to test for power, you hook it up to ground. When you're trying to test for grounds, you hook it up to power. So you cut, you just hook it up to the opposite. Now we'll get into the better version the of better this version of this tool at a whopping ten dollars. I know it's nothing. Is going to be your two probe test light. Now this has a different style circuit in it. it. Still has a light bulb in there, but it has two different colors. So when you have power, when you're touching a wire with power, it illuminates red. When you're touching a wire with ground, it illuminates green. What this does for us is it removes any doubt from anyone who doesn't understand the single probe system. Because all you do is you connect it up to the positive and negative cable of the battery, and you probe wherever you like. And what's beautiful about this system is you don't have to reverse anything, or you don't have to think, oh, I have to do the opposite. None of that. So we're gonna go ahead and test this. Okay guys, I have to move this battery very close because the lights are very dim out here in the sunlight. Now, you can see the light there. I'm gonna go ahead and touch the power side. As you can see, it's hard to tell, but that light has illuminated red. Now if I go and touch the ground side, the negative side, this light is gonna illuminate green. Again, super hard to tell, but it is illuminating green. This system is beautiful because you don't have to change the probes around like I said. And it works just like the other system. It's just to look at is alligator clips. Now what is an alligator clip? Well, let's get one out for you here. Here is your alligator clip. It's got a little spring in it and it allows you to connect to certain circuits or connect to power say. Because sometimes the leads on some of these test equipment aren't long enough or you need to create your own little circuit whatever the case may be these things are great to have you should always have a couple sets of alligator clips two on each side and these are going to help you out if you need to make a longer power wire to test something or you need to ground something out to test it so again all this stuff will be talked about in later videos now with this video we also want to kind of look at some fuses and some relays there you have a little baby fuse. So this is a 30 amp fuse. And you can see that little metal clip on the inside there that connects both prongs. So what a fuse does is it allows power to go through both sides and into the rest of the electrical system, but only if it's less than the rated amount on the top there. As you can see, oh, sorry, it's upside down, it says 30. So if say more than 30 amps tries to go through this fuse, the inside of it will disintegrate, it'll melt out, and then electricity cannot flow through it anymore. What this does, this is something to help protect your electrical circuit by popping this fuse before too much electricity gets to all your expensive components. So let's say this is a 30 amp fuse, but you have a short somewhere. Well, electricity flows the path of least resistance, and therefore, if there's a short somewhere over here, a lot of power is gonna to wanna to move through and go through the fuse and go there. In doing so, maybe it's 35 amps of power, maybe it's 40 amps, it'll pop the fuse, and then the electricity cannot get through the fuse. Now with a relay, it's a little more complicated. Um, their, their relays come in various shapes, sizes, and pin allegations. So this here is a four pin relay. Um, there's also a lot of five pin relays. Um, those are the ones that I've seen mainly. So 
with a relay, you have a power and you have a ground side. So two of the prongs, you can have one that's power, one that's ground. And the other two are gonna be where power is waiting to cross the bridge. So when you have power and you have ground, then the bridge is open for electricity to flow through it. It's hard to explain, but there is a little schematic here that'll show you this. So if you look here, you have pin 86, which is your normal power. You have pin 85, which is your normal ground. And then you have pin 30, where the power, your 12 volt feed or your five volt feed, whatever it is, is waiting to cross the bridge, but it can't yet. Once this circuit is turned on for 80, 86 and 85, once the circuit's turned on, the bridge will lower and allow the power to shoot through. It'll shoot through to pin 87 and out to the component. Well, when you understand how these pin denominations work, you'll know which pin to test with your multimeter or your test light or whatever you want to use, and then you'll understand if it's a, if it's a bad relay or not. So again, we'll have a video on relays also to come. All right, guys, that's going to close up the video today for, for the different test equipment that we use to diagnose electrical problems. Make sure to stay tuned as this is the first video in a large segment of how to use all these tools specifically to test batteries, relays, fuses, amperage draw, all kinds of good stuff. Continuity. We're going to help you out here. So please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to all the videos. Um, we love having you. And we hope to see you on the next video. Thanks again. This is Anthony at DIY Auto Tech. We'll see you next time.